guys and gals, friends of YouTube. Love to fly helis here. Um, it is winter time. Nasty weather out. Actually, we might get to fly Saturday or Sunday. It's a 80% chance of snow and sleet today, and then Saturday and Sunday is supposed to be mostly sunny, and high of 43. So we'll see. But anyway, um, I've had several people ask me when I was going to do some more bill videos, and uh, uh, like I say, it's winter time. I've got several I, I still have about 11 or 12 new ones sitting over here in the boxes and, and i have most of the stuff for most of them i still got to buy a couple of engines and this and that anyway i bought a new one a week ago and i'm going to go ahead and jump ahead and start this one because i have everything for it i have all the servos i have the engine i have everything so we're going to be and i'm i'm actually excited about getting this going we are going to build the new phoenix models genesis uh comes with aluminum retracts uh, it's a cool looking plane uh, it, there's planes that all say man that's a pretty plane this one is just kind of neat looking uh, it is a pylon racer or, or you know reno racer uh, it'll be pretty fast it's it's built kind of strange looking it the shape of it looks a whole lot like the efx racer uh, from durfly that i have but this one's bigger so anyway uh, if everything works out right, we will be mounting an OS GT15 gas engine in this. Uh, there's a, it's a big cowl. The front of the fuselage is really, really big, so I think there's going to be plenty of room for that without having to butcher the cowl up too bad. If it looks like it's going to be real bad, then I'll put an OS 74 stroke on it. But I think, I think I'm going to be able to fit the gas engine in it just fine. Uh, love the retracts and stuff that comes with it now. So anyway, I'm not going to do an unboxing on this. I mean, y'all have seen tons of unboxings they're they're all the same you know you got the wings the fuselage the back of parts i want to jump right to this and start building it so anyway uh let me get this stuff out of the box that we need to start with and let's get started on this thing okay uh, we are ready to get started here uh, start with the wings and uh got the two wing halves laid out here um the covering looks really good on this I, there's very little wrinkling uh I mean hardly none so they've done a they've done a really good job on this um, it's cut out for your aileron servo and then you're cut out for your retracts right here um, and then of course this is your your pans for the retract wheels to fold up into and actually I don't need those yet these actually go in the bottom of the fuselage when we get to that point um, but uh, here's the retracts nice looking uh, aluminum retracts and they've got the like the oleo strut shocks on them so uh really really liking that they've, they've added these new retracts to a lot of their new models so the new strega model or strega mustang model is coming out which i will have as soon as it's in stock um, the new spitfire has been remodeled and it's now scale has scale landing gear scale flaps uh the old spitfire the wheels folded inward like a P-51 Mustang, which was wrong on a Spitfire. They fold from the center out. So they've redone all that. So uh, the new Spitfire is nice looking too. Um, we're going to be using uh, the Tactic TSX-35 uh, standard servos with this. Um, let's see. Six volt or 73 ounce torque. That'll be plenty. This is not really an acrobatic plane. It's a fast plane. As you can see, the, the ailerons are a little bitty. It's not made to do inverted flat spins or anything like that. So there's not going to be a whole lot of torque put on these. Uh, we also, uh, we're going to be using the Tower Hobbies TS-63 low profile retract servos. This plane does take two, one in each wing on this plane. Uh, I usually use the Futabas, but they're $67. I've got other Tower Hobbies uh, servos and some other planes. I've never had any problem with them. These are half the price. I got both of these for $67. They're rated at the same torque, everything. So I'm going to give them a try. We'll see what happens. Uh, hopefully I'm not unlucky with them. But uh, got all that, the two tires. The one thing that it did come with that I'm kind of disappointed on the ad tower, uh, the picture, it shows a three-blade nose cone and prop on this plane. Also on the picture on the box, it shows a three-blade prop and nose cone. But when you get it, it's a two-blade Uh to me, that's deceiving. They shouldn't be putting that in their pictures if that's not what it's coming with. But I will be running a three-blade prop because it's stock uh, uh, scale to this type of plane. But I'm also going to get rid of this plastic blue two-blade. I'll give it to my friend Bill. 
and I will be using an aluminum three blade nose cone or spinner. So, but that's that was only one of the things that kind of disappointed me. They're advertising it with a three blade nose cone, uh, but it doesn't come with it. It comes with a two blade. So I'm not sure what's up with that, but uh, I don't think they should be putting that in their pictures and their ads if that's not what it comes with. So <clears throat> nowhere on there does it say in any fine print or anything that it you know that doesn't come with that. So it leads you to believe that it does. But anyway, I like the kit so far. Uh, okay, well, the only thing else I've got to get out right here to get started is my servo extensions, and I need to build those right quick. I'm not going to bore you with that. Uh, you've seen that on other videos and and stuff, and I have an actual video just building uh, servo leads. So I'm going to put those together, and uh, then we will, and I'll get all these servos out of the package and get the parts laid out, and before we can actually start getting going on the build on this thing. So I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, guys, I've uh, got my servos out and uh, put one of them together. I'll, I'll kind of I'll go ahead and finish this one up on here so you can kind of see. All pretty basic. Uh, the Tactics have the round grommet. I'm not real crazy about those. They're okay, but they're kind of a pain to get in. You just have to uh, squeeze it and kind of get one side started. And then take a little flathead screwdriver and carefully go around it, feeding it down through the hole without tearing a hole in it. Try to stay here in the camera for you. There we go. Now, make sure those all the way through. Um, now, again, I've done this in other videos, but when you put your metal grommets in, put them in from the bottom. Don't put them in from the top. Uh, what that does, that serves as a washer or a stop on the bottom of that against your wood servo tray. If you put these in the other way, then it has a sharp edge that will just dig into the wood and it'll loosen it up over time. So always put these in from the bottom. And then when you put the screw in from the top, it has a washer built onto it. So serves as a top washer. So always be sure and put your grommets in from the bottom side. Um, these, like I say, these are kind of a pain in the butt to get the rubber grommets down in there. But just very carefully kind of feed it through with a little flathead screwdriver. And we'll put our metal grommet inside there. One more. things they want to get away from you so be careful because they'll fly out of there and go scooting across the room and they're hard to find little black things on the floor so I have a whole drawer full of extra ones in case I do lose anything but I lost a tip to my lead while go flew across the room <laughs> I'll find it later it's over there amongst them boxes but anyway okay we're just going to stick the servo arm on here for now, um, just so we don't lose it more or less than anything. Um, screw the screw down in there. We'll take it back off and center it as soon as we hook it up and everything. So, anyway, got all the grommets in. Um, I've got my leads made. Now, I color coded my leads because I'm putting my ailerons on separate channels. So I've got a blue one and a green one. I was out of yellow. I usually use yellow and blue, but uh, either way, different colors. <clears throat> if you're going to use separate channels for your ailerons, you need to color code them. Uh, so you know which one plugs into your receiver. And then when, on your receiver inside the plane, then you're going to want to put a color-coded little short lead coming out of that so you know which ones they plug into. Make sure those are secure. Your colors or the polarities right and I like a piece of heat shrink you can use safety clips but I like the heat shrink on the ones in the wings because it's not anything you're going to be taking apart anytime soon now on the parts that uh, like the leads when I plug them into the receiver I will uh, use safety clips on those 
to keep them from vibrating loose, but inside the wing, I'll, I'll use this. You can use a lighter to do this, but it's much safer if you have a heat gun for covering. Uh, I like this. No danger of really melting the wires like an open flame. Or catching your table on fire or something. So. to let it cool. Now I want to make sure that's soaked down really good and snug where that won't pull apart. Uh, okay, we got those ready. Let me uh, put up a few tools here right quick. And we will get started putting this thing together. I got to get some of this stuff out of my way though. Start getting cluttered up here and gets in my way. So put my wiring pliers. Uh, now, most of you guys are going to buy your servo leads, extensions, and Y harnesses and stuff. Um, there's a, a really good place to get these. They're heavy duty, uh, copper plated, and you can get JR Futaba. Bad Brad Graphics uh, has a good deal on these. You can get any length of, of uh, extension for $3, and he will pack as many as he can get in a standard size manila envelope. And the shipping's only three dollars, so you can save a lot of money. You buy these at the hobby shops, and they're like the cheapest ones, like four something. And then as they get longer, they get on up to six, seven, eight dollars a piece. But he has all links for three dollars a piece. His Y harnesses are three dollars a piece. Uh, really good deal. But Bad Brad Graphics, uh, look him up on the website or give him a call. Uh, I may have a. Here you go. There's his card right there. Uh, best thing to do is just give him a call at that phone number and talk to him and if he doesn't answer just leave him a message and he'll call you back in just a little bit. He's a great guy, has some great stuff, he has all kinds of RC stuff but I love the uh, extensions and stuff he has. But anyway, there's his website and his phone number. Give Brad a call and, and uh, get you some leads and stuff from him if you need them. Okay, uh, now what we're going to do, let's see. Uh, before I put these in the wing, I want to center these up. So what I'm going to do is get my radio uh, and link my receiver and go ahead and where I can plug these in and uh, get them centered up 90 degree and everything. As soon as I get that done, I'll be right back and we'll start putting them in the wing. Okay, um, got my receiver linked up. Lights are on. And I've got my servos plugged in. You plug your, on, when you do dual channels, you plug your right aileron into the aileron channel, which is number one on here. Um, and then, well, on a, on this receiver, I don't know, Futaba and stuff may be different. I'm using Spectrum. But anyway, uh, your right aileron always goes in your main aileron channel. And then on what I did, I piggybacked aux one for channel the second channel for the left aileron. This way you can go in and individually sub trim each one of those and get them really really accurate. Uh, okay one thing we're going to do right now uh, if you see the control horn is off center. So one thing I'm going to do well let's see here's what I gotta figure out first. Alright this is my right wing this is the right wing so, I'm going to take that off, let's see, let me look and see what they're showing. Okay, they're putting the control horn the farthest away. So it would go in here like this. So that's the right one. Now I want that horn to stick out and that is almost 90 degree. Okay, let's put the screw back in it. And I may have to take it back out, put my quick links on, but let's go ahead and get that. Alright, now I can go in. This is the right one, so it's in the regular servo channel so I can go in to list and I can go to sub trim and in my radio and the JR radio it labels it right aileron it says R A I L and then over here 
L A I L right and left aileron. So I'll go to the right one, I highlight that, and then I can turn this and sub trim that to a 90 degree. About right there. But let's see. Hang on, man. Let me see here. This is your right wing. So right would go up. That's right. I want to make sure I didn't have to reverse them first. Okay, so that one's 90 degree. Now this one is going to be... Let me get my left wing over here and make sure I got my orientation right. Farthest away. So I've got it on there right. So what we're going to do is unhighlight that one. We are going over to the left aileron now. I like that one. And we're going to crank it till that one is 90 degree. There we go. Got both of them working. Of course, they'll be opposites. They'll be like this in the wing. So they, they will go opposite directions. But anyway, all right. We've got those all 90 degree now. This is the right one. Need to go back just a hair on this one. There we go. Okay. Now we've got those set up. Um, I'm ready to install them in the wings. So let me uh, get this unplugged here. We'll unplug our battery, lay it aside. And we'll unplug our ailerons from our receiver. Lay the receiver aside. And uh, let me get stuff laid out here and I'll be right back and we'll install them in the wing. Okay. Uh, we've got our drill, our little drill bit. I am using a 1 16th bit, which is smaller than the screw. Okay. Now we're going to take this plate. We want to be sure. Right, I want to show you something on this. Now in the In the instruction book, it shows that the servo arm goes this way. This will fit either direction, and there's plenty of room either direction. Well, here's what you end up with. Your linkage is going to be hooked right here to the corner of your aileron. It's best to get your hookup as close to the center of the aileron as you can. What happens if you hook right here in the corner? This is a small aileron, so it's not going to matter that much, but if you had a great big aileron and you hooked a control horn right here, you're a lot more likely to get flutter. And flutter is a bad thing. It will cause your plane to disintegrate in the air. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to rotate this. And I checked that out. Everything's the same amount of space, so it will work fine. I'm going to rotate this. The aileron is made out of solid stock. So there's I can bolt it anywhere. And that will put my control horn a little bit farther over towards center. Not a whole lot, but enough to make a little bit of difference. Like I said, on this little bitty aileron, it's probably not going to matter too much, but uh, I want to try to get it over here closer to center if I can <clears throat> because of the flutter. I don't want any flutter in this thing. So so I have changed that from what the book showed. <clears throat> so now, got your plate. I've already cut out the hole of the covering right here. So on, I know my blue one is my right one, so this is the right wing. So we're going to... Put that in there, and it will set just like that. So what I'm going to do now, um, hmm, a little bit of some glue right here. Let me take my knife and see if I can clean that out of the way. They didn't do a very Careful job of not getting big blobs of glue in there. So. Okay. Now, I'm going to want a spacer under that. <coughs> um, let me see here what I got working around. <coughs> you can use about anything, piece of paper, fold it up. What I like to use is this piece of heat shrink. And I stick that underneath. The servo and that way you can kind of put pressure down on it and that keeps it up off of the wood you, you don't want 
This says the rubber grommets on it for a reason. That's to absorb vibration. So you don't want this servo laying right against the wood surface because that picks up more vibration from the plane, the engine and stuff. So you want to keep a space between there when you're drilling your holes. So we've got that in place. Very carefully. We're going to drill our holes in this. Now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to screw all the screws in here and then we're going to take them right back out and put thin CA in the holes. So I'm just going to use one screw for now and do all the holes. Chances are good they probably won't come loose, but it's better to uh, um, go ahead and CA your holes. It makes it fit a lot more solid. So, okay. Kind of locks them in there like, like a lock nut, sort of. Keeps the vibration from making them come loose. So, But you want to thread all of them first. Then go back and put your CA in there and that, that will fill those threads up and it'll make the screw fit in there really tight. Okay. Now I get that back out of there. I need to get my little electric screwdriver. Okay. Now we've got our holes in our plate. Uh, let me get my thin CA. That's a bad one. I don't want it set up on me over here. All right. See if I can get this out of here without. Ah, come on. After this stuff sets a while, it's. Yeah, that's what I thought. This tip is plugged up. So let me get a pair of pliers. Get that off. And get a new tip up here. Push that down on there, and then we will we'll put oh one two three about four drops of glue in each hole. Okay, I let it run all over my finger there. So uh, good idea to keep some debonder handy, and that way if you get this on your covering or on your fingers or whatever, you can get it off real quick with paper towel and this debonder. Uh, it uh, just looks like that. It says CA debonder down here in the corner, but it will it'll take that glue loose. So always keep a bottle of that handy. Now we want to let that glue set good before we put our servo on there and screw it down because we don't want the glue sticking to this because you ever have to remove it for some reason and it could bust the wood and stuff. So. Let that dry pretty good. And uh, I'll turn this off for a minute and try to save some time. I'll be back in just a second. Okay, um, the glue has dried. Now we're going to set our servo back in here. And we're going to take our screws. And this is my little electric uh, screwdriver. I love it for these servo screws. It's made by General. I got it at Lowe's, like 10 bucks. And Generally, it works really well if your wood's not just real hard. Looks like I need a bigger tip on it. Trying to spin on me. Wow. Can't get that to go all the way down. What the heck? Let me get a bigger screwdriver here. Well, it's not going to work on these, I guess. Uh, Wood's too tough. Maybe I can get it started again. Yeah, these screw heads are generally it works, but on these it came with these tactics, doesn't fit the little head real good. So I'll just use a regular screwdriver. But anyway, it usually works really well for most applications, uh, especially down in the fuselage and stuff. Hard to get to. I love the little screwdriver. But. We will use 
a uh, regular one on this. Now screw these down. Don't just squish your rubber grommets to death. Snug them, but you, you want a little bit of slack. And so we've got slack in between here where we had our spacer, so that's for vibration. Okay, almost done here. Oh, come on, got that hole a little bit crooked. Okay, all right, that one's mounted up. Uh, I think, hang on a minute. One thing I forgot to do is I want to put my quick connects on here. Set screw. Safety. There's two of those. Two of those. I need one more screw. Okay. I love these quick connects. I use them on all my planes. I have never had one come loose. Now this I didn't even have to drill the hole out. It fit perfect in there. Uh, what I am going to do though is pull the servo horn off. It's this bigger screwdriver. Now, without it plugged in, you want to be sure and keep your keep your arm set where you know right where it goes back on, like at a 90 degree. So we're going to pop it off right there. And let me get this little this little socket set I've got a 764th fits perfect. And these little snap caps and then I've got my little handy dandy brass hammer that I got at Harbor Freight so we'll turn this over it's kind of magnetized too so that helps um, we're gonna hold that in place give her a couple little taps she's on there good and solid then I'm gonna take the little plastic safety cap Snap it on there with a pair of needle nose. And I use Loctite on these screws. And I have 50 plus planes. I use these on every one of them I have for eight years. I have never, ever had one come loose, ever. As long as you use Loctite on the screws and you make sure you got good little snap caps on here. So a lot of people say, oh, I don't like them. I don't trust them. I'm afraid they'll come loose. I've never had one come loose in eight years and I've done a lot of flying. So for now, we'll just put the screw in it without the Loctite. And then we will stick it back up in here put this at a 90 degree where it came off and put the screw back in it okay. okay that one is ready now let's lay that over there aside okay there's threads tied into your wing They'll be taped at each end. We are going to pull, well, we're going to leave that end right where it's at for now. We're going to take this end loose and we're going to tie it around the servo lead. If you ever lose one of these strings, don't worry about it. It's not that hard to put another one in here. Uh, you just use your little nut. A little heavy metal nut, tie it on a piece of thread and wiggle it around, drop it down through there until it comes out the other end, kind of making a little plumb bob, so to speak. And, uh, well, this silly thread. Boy, they didn't leave you much slack on this, I tell you. And my big old fingers making it a little bit hard to get tied in a knot. Okay. Now, I usually tie it a little ways back from the end and I kind of fold that over. That way when you're pulling it, it, will, it won't get hung up as bad. Now, let's undo this end. And let's very gently guide it through. And kind of wiggle them around sometime to get them to go just right through those little openings. Almost there. OK. 
Okay. There we go. Now, we want to make sure our wire is not hitting anything. And there we go. Okay. We've got our lead coming out the other end down here. Hope you can see that. Now, what we're going to do, uh, we got to find the little screws. We'll go to this. So let's get stuff out of this bag. With the control horns. I'm pretty impressed with this uh, this stuff here. It it now comes with metal clevises. Didn't used to do that. Phoenix models have upgraded their quality a little bit. Uh, and they've started putting metal clevises and stuff, which I like. Uh, it comes with these little quick connects of their own. I don't like those. They've got the little screw nuts. Those do make me nervous. I've used Loctite on them, and I've not ever had one come loose, but I, I prefer the snap cap type that I use. Uh, they're Great Plains brand. And so I'll just keep these for backup or use with something else. Now, what we want is our four little, there should be eight of these, Little small screws that will go in this wooden piece. Well, they'll actually be more than eight because you've got four doors, so they'll be 16. Now, I'm going to take one of these. I got a package of these. I can't remember where I got them, but you can get these little plastic tubs all over the place. And then the excess stuff, I keep from losing track of it. We are going to put in here. Okay, got one screw too many. All right, let's put the lid on that. We'll drop it back down in this big bowl, set it aside. Now, there again, we're going to use our drill. We are going to drill holes right in the corner of this. There's a block of wood underneath it. that make sure you get them kind of even we're going to do the same thing we're going to start our screws in this and then we're going to uh, put a uh, <coughs> lot to earn thin CA in these holes after we thread them so I'm going to do that and then I'll be right back okay got our holes glued um, the little electric screwdriver does work good for this be careful don't let it slip off and jam a hole through your covering. That's real easy to do. So we'll just run them down. Just snug them. We're not going to bury them up in the wood. Okay. I love this little screwdriver for this stuff. It works great. These little cheap screw heads just don't have good grooves in them. There we go. One more. Alrighty. Alright, there we go. One servo installed. I got a quick connect for our rod. Uh, I do have to glue these hinges, I haven't done that yet, but we'll go back. I've got my lead hanging out down here on this end, so color coded, right wing's blue, left wing's green. I will do the same thing on my extensions coming out of my receiver, so. Alright, be back in a minute. Okay guys, um, we've got servo installed, but before we hook this linkage up, now you're on this particular plane, the ailerons come with the hinges in them, but they're not glued, so beware of that. Don't, don't put this thing together and not realize they're not glued. So we're going to pull them out. And what we're going to do is pull these hinges out. <clears throat> Let me get this down here. We are going to take a pencil and we're going to mark the center line. And you can guess at these real easy there. Just make a mark right across the center. Okay. Now we want to put these back in the slots. Put them in there. Push it right up to that pencil line. 
Okay. Make sure they're nice and square and even in the hole. Okay. Now, what you want to do is take a push pin or T-pin and stick it right through that, right next to the aileron control surface, whatever you're putting on. Just close to the center if you can. What this does, it keeps this from sliding up inside here when you put this aileron back on the wing. So now we're going to try to guide those back in the hinge holes. Down a little bit. Get all three of them started. Now we want to turn our wing over and make sure we've got our yellow covering line lined up and you want an even amount of space on each end. Okay, ouch, pins are sharp, you know that? Now we've got that pushed all the way up snug. At this point you can pull your pins out and you can snug it on up. And what we're going to do is put six, eight drops of thin CA on these hinges on each side to make sure that it wicks in there and bonds to the wood inside this wing. Let me get my pen out of here. Now, we'll just very gently fold it back where you can see the hinge and just, just drop five, six, Seven, so we'll do about seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Now we're going to turn it over. We're going to do this side. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. These are called CA hinges. And the reason for that is they are. And they're like a wick uh, in a lantern or a candle. It will wick the CA right up inside the wing and saturate that and it'll bond it to the wood inside there. So you want to get plenty of CA in that. Now, just kind of wiggle it back and forth. Make sure you've got full clearance and it's tight. And it doesn't take long for it to set. So now what we'll do is, let's see, I've got my linkage laid out here. Uh, one thing I do need is control horns. So let's open that bag up. It comes with some really nice control horns. I like they're black too. They look good on here. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take all this out of the baggie. We're going to get another one of our little tubs. I have all different sizes of these little tubs. i got big ones, little ones. These little ones work great for stuff like this. So one of those, let's put everything else in here. And this just keeps stuff a little more organized and, you know, you don't have one big bowl full of bolts and everything else and, and uh, get all tied up, tangled together and everything. So, okay, now... What we want to do is, let's see, let me find the bolts. Hmm. Let me look in the book and see what it shows on the control horns. It should be. Okay. Well, let's see if I can find it here. Um, so I'm going to send it there on the hold of the place you can come up with. Where does it tell me how to put the pusher on? It's right here, I guess. Okay, installing the control horns. 
Control one in the position, each other on using a ruler, pin, locate the mark, locate the center line, blah blah blah. Drill two holes through the arm using the control horn and guide the screw the horn. I'm trying to figure out what screws goes in it. Repeat steps one, two, install control horn on opposite aileron. Okay, it doesn't say what screws to use. That's the lamp and gear, motor mount. Generally, these come with machine screws that screw through there. Um, but there's not any with this, so let's see. We dump this out here, and it doesn't tell in the manual which ones to use, so. Alright. We do need two of those anyway. Let's see what we got here. One, two, three. We got four of those. And I'm thinking that the wing aileron is slightly thicker. It is, it's quite a bit thicker. So it would have to be these four longer ones, I'm guessing. And then there's some uh, some medium ones, which would be, there should be four of those. Let me see if I can find two for elevator and two for aileron. Uh, not aileron, uh, rudder. That one's too short. Where is the, there it is. Okay, I think we've got them figured out now, so it definitely would be the long ones on the A-lines. They're thicker, so they're little sheet metal screws. Kind of weird. Either way, as long as they tighten up good. All right, we only need two for right now because we're doing the other wing separate. Right. Okay, put that on. That's... That's a bad thing about some of these models, these, these kits. The instructions are not real clear. I mean, this is basically you get a few pictures and very little print. Install and secure retract gear to wing. You know, it doesn't really, it just doesn't give you a whole lot of information and stuff. So, um, all right, we're going to mount the control horn. Now, what we want to do is run our rod through there and get us a straight line. And we want this on your control horn, use these holes as a center line. You want that lined up right straight up and down above the center of this gap. You don't want it too far forward, too far back. It'll bind. You need to get it perfectly lined up. And by putting this in here, it'll tell us right where we need to get it back here. And then we are going to... Mark that a little farther forward. Okay. Ah, let it slip on me. But it's real important that you get those holes lined up real good. Alright, what I'm going to do, start one of these, I'll try my little electric screwdriver, I need just a slightly bigger tip for it, alright, we're going to take that all the way through, okay, I do have my holes lined up right over the center, oops, I screwed it into the towel, okay, now we want to make sure it's turn 90 degree toward the servo. Now we will very carefully drill the other one. Try to get it as straight as you can. Going all the way through. Now find my screw. There it is. Now what we'll do, run this one on down.
camera up here so you can see what I'm doing. Now, we've got two tips sticking out on the other side. So what we're going to do there is put this, make sure the holes line up good. I may have to wallow it just a little. Oh, pretty good. Now, I'm going to hold this with my finger and I'm going to start each one of those. But I'm probably going to have to use a different screwdriver because it's wanting to slip now. Get that one started. This one started. Screw them down a little at a time. Just pull each side down a little at a time until it's snug with the aileron. You don't want to pull it down into the wood real hard. Snug it up. Okay. Now those have got some sharp tips right there. I will probably take a little Dremel stone and cut those off because that will that'll cut your finger or hang something on it. So I'll probably shave those off level here in a minute. But let's go ahead and do this. Okay. Now, at this point, we're going to want the radio on. Turn it on. It's already on the right plane. We are going to take the receiver. And we're going to plug in. This is the right wing. So we're going to plug this one into the aileron channel, the main aileron channel. Remember, the left one is going to go into aux 1, which we piggybacked. Now you can run these off a Y harness, but I prefer to do it this way anytime I can. Okay, radio's on. Let's get a battery. And, uh, plug the battery into the receiver. There we go. Lights on. Now, what we're going to do is, what do I do with my clevis? There it is. We're going to put this little rubber piece of fuel line over this clevis right here. Just on the collar of it and keep it right there. Now, we're going to Loctite this. Normally, the way they do it with an L-bend on the other end, you have to make your adjustments with this. But we're not going to. We can go ahead and lock it down. What I'm going to do is screw this on to where I've got a sixteenth of an inch of the rod sticking into the clevis. Okay? Now, with Loctite on both pieces of that, the nut and the clevis itself, we are going to take two pair of needle nose. And we're going to cinch that little burger down right there. Good and tight, okay? Now we don't have to worry about unscrewing that to make adjustments because we've got a quick connect on this other end. All right, let me see if it shows in the book by chance what hole to put it in. Sometimes they give a recommendation. Yeah, it doesn't really show. So we are going to... I don't think we're going to need a whole lot of throw on this thing, so I'm going to go. I'm going to go the second hole down. That will lessen the throw that we have to have on the uh, servo. I can get it on here. Okay, snap that little dude together. Now we can take fingers or needle nose, whatever, slide our rubber piece up on the uh, control horn, or the clevis, I mean, so it doesn't come loose. And I just goofed up. I forgot to stick this through the hole. So let me take it off. Okay, I need to run it through my quick connect first. I'll tell you what I'm going to do too. I'm going to go ahead and get an idea of how long. So, 
I'm going to cut that off and get my cutters. Okay. That off. Now let's run it through here. And then we'll attach it to the second hole. We'll slide our rubber back up over it. And that's the safety to keep it from from uh, coming loose on anything. All right. Now at this point, we want to find Allen ball driver. I think that's too big. Yeah. Let me see what I got here. Uh, <coughs> well, let me get in this drawer. Let's find one in here. It will work. That's too big. Goodness, that's too little. Well, guess what? It's not metric. <laughs> so these are, yeah, these are metric. Uh, I should have got the other bag. Get these stuff back in here right quick. Well, here for now, I'm just gonna lay them right over there because I don't want to get them mixed up. And let's go with the SAE. That should be it right there. Too little. That's it. There it is. Okay. We're gonna take this off and we're gonna put Loctite on it. Never had one come loose, as long as you lock tight it good. Okay, we've already got our servo centered up. So what we're going to do is we're going to take one of these heavy clamps. And we're going to put it right here on the wing and the aileron to hold that in position while we tighten this. Okay. Now let me get this on here. Now, I want to get a hold of this block with a pair of pliers so we don't twist our linkage. Get my wrench in there good. And we're going to give her a good cinch. Okay, take the clamp off. Now, we want to work our aileron slowly to make sure it's not going to bind into the wing itself. Alright, we're, we're clear. We'll, we'll turn those throws down, I'm sure, so it's at 100% right now. Everything centered back up. There we go. Got that part of the wing done. Servo installed. Let me put this Loctite back. <coughs> now, got a nice, neat uh, your safety rubber on there. Uh, and you got an easy way to adjust this with that quick neck without having to unscrew that clevis and... You can get it, and plus you can go into your uh, your sub trim and fine tune it to your travel adjustment stuff. So, all right, we got that aileron done. Let me take a break just a second, and then we'll come back and put the retrack in it. Okay, boys and girls, we have a slight problem. I have to do some modification. Uh, I've got the low pro profile retract. Uh, the Futaba one that it called for is the same size as this, except thicker, and the space where it bolts to is not wide enough. So, there's no way to get in there with a saw or a Dremel blade, so what I'm going to have to use is this uh, rotary cutter, and I'm going to have to be really, really careful. But I'm going to have to cut down through that and get some of that out of the way. So I'm going to try very gently.
Okay. I don't know. Hopefully this is going to work. For one thing, these little bits are very dangerous. They can slip out of your hand and, I mean, rip a finger off. I get my <coughs> most of sodas <coughs> out of it. <coughs> All right, I'm going to find it. Sand block. It won't go in there. Shoot. Man, oh man. I'll tell you what, they don't make this easy, that's for sure. Let me see what I, how close I got. Well, it'll almost... Wow. This is really crazy. The arm is hitting the top piece of the wing. It won't even go down far enough. So I am not real sure what we're going to do here. But that's the way it shows it to go in here in the book. It shows it to go with the servo arm down. Hmm. Not good. Not good at all. Well, and I don't think upward there's no way it's going to work. Okay, this is crazy because what it shows in the book, it shows the servo arm as being from the center where it mounts. To your quick connect it shows 15 millimeters there's no way the 15 millimeters is going to fit down in that so we are going to have to cut that off hmm all right let me do let me do a little thinking here and get the parts back out let's see what we can come up with on a shorter horn. Let's see, that's not it. Here they are. Uh, yeah. Except the round one. The round one might work, but it ain't gonna be no 15 millimeters, so hopefully that one. But you should be able to adjust the travel and everything on these in your radio, and they have a clutch in them, they have a stop. So I don't know why they're saying 15 millimeters because that ain't gonna work no way not enough room so let's get the round one out see if it's gonna clear it will clear but i'm gonna have to cut farther down to get the servo to set farther down in there so it'll go up under there. So the depth is not right either. That's what you run into on these goofy kits. They just sometimes they don't make a bit of sense. So now I gotta get down in there, take that down a little bit. So let me do that and I'll be back. Okay, I had to change the collet to a smaller shaft because I had this cone shaped deal. Let's see what that'll do.
think I'm deep enough yet, but let's see what we got. Almost like just a hair. All right, I'm going to take a little bit more and I'll be back. All right, guys and gals, I forgot to turn my camera on a minute ago. Um, I had to modify the gap here, of course, with my Dremel to make that bigger uh, for the servo to fit in. And I got all that whittled out and got it in there. The hard part about this is, is you can't get to these bottom screw holes to drill holes. I had to use a different kind with an Allen head on it and I had to get them down in there and just thread them into the wood. I drilled the two top ones um, because this wing right here there's just there's just no way it's almost impossible to get down in there so this has been been a pain getting this thing in but I finally got it in there and I got my linkage cut it's just got a clevis on the end of it just like the ailerons and stuff. Uh, put my quick connect on there and I've got everything adjusted now where it's locking in good and solid got the shocks here and there we go one retract so i'll put the cover on this dude and uh screw her down and we're done with that one so well i gotta put this cover there's a little white cover that goes right here it mounts on that after you get the wheel on there so it kind of hides that I guess so we'll get that on here here in a minute and probably wrap this up I'm sure this is probably close to an hour if not over on this I'm trying to keep them short guys but man it is so hard to do so um, anyway we will we will end this one here um, actually let me show you there's nothing to putting the axles and wheels on you just There's a there's a set screw in the bottom here of this. If you can see that, there's a set screw right there. You need to back that out. If I can find my Allen wrench, it'll fit it. Look at that, first try. We're gonna put Loctite on that also. Um, looks like you put a washer. Not sure. I'm using a different, they come with these little rubber tires, but they're real hard. I'm going to use these Hangar 9 rubbery ones that are softer. It won't bounce as bad. So, let's see what we got here. Ooh, if I do, I'll have to drill them out. Well, you know what? Maybe I won't, because I'd have to drill them out. I'll just use what come with it for now. Uh, I don't think it shows where the spacer goes, but let me look. like it shows it maybe to go on the outside so let's put it here that on there let's put some Loctite on this dude do not want our wheels coming off start hmm what's up with that there I got it going Let's see if I can get an Allen wrench it'll fit it it's threaded in there crooked how weird is that Guess it'll work though. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what the spacing deal is here. It doesn't really show it. Maybe it does go to the inside. It's hard to tell. Let me get it off of here. All you get in these instructions are little goofy pictures. It doesn't really show a whole lot, so it's kind of hard to tell. Put a little bit more Loctite on it. So 
I can get it started again. There we go. Got a little burr on it, I guess. All right, well, you can't tighten it all the way up because of the wheel spinning. So we'll leave just enough space there. Now, let's put some Loctite on this dude. And we will put that back in there. Cinch that down against the axle. I'm gonna get me a little paper towel so I can get a grip on this. My hands are kind of slick. Okay. All right. Got that. Zoom it back out here. All right. We got a working wheel. And then this uh, little plate bolts on to this little dude, I guess. Guy's gonna want to do it like that, so he makes sure it makes sure that it clears the side of that. And if it shows, it just shows bolting it on there. Okay, so we will put that in place and uh, put the screws in it. See what it looks like covered. There's what that'll look like. I'll cover that up. So, all right, we are done with this. Uh, next uh, part, we will start on the fuselage. Well, we'll have to put the first thing we'll do on the fuselage when we start is we'll put these pans in it for the retracts, and then we'll move on from that to the stab and, and stuff, and then start putting electronics in this dude. But anyway. Uh, I'm off for four days this weekend. I plan on working on this at least two or three days. So you guys uh, stay tuned. Part two will be coming up pretty soon. And I cannot wait to get this bird in the air. I, I sure like it. So, All right, bud. Thanks for watching.